Infinity by Corvus Belly has been around for longer than you might think. The original first edition rules were released in 2005, making the game 15 years old. Now games don't get to stick around for 15 years without doing something right, however they also tend to grow arms and legs rules wise over that time. So with the 4th edition, N4, coming out later this year, Corvus Belly have decided now is the right time to release a streamlined version of its game to introduce new players to the Infinity Universe. Now Infinity is a little different from a lot of miniatures games out there. It's very much a tactical game in which you are never really off the clock. There's never a point where you say to your opponent, I'm just nipping off to the toilet, you play your turn while I'm gone. Because as the game tells you, it's always your turn. A lot of games introduce mechanics to make you feel like you're reacting to what your opponent is doing, with things like firing overwatch into a charge or maybe spending tokens to reroll failed saves. However, Infinity really does capture that feeling of always playing. For those not familiar with Infinity and its automatic reaction order mechanic, you can watch this video here where I tell you what Infinity Code 1 is and go over the basic mechanics that set Infinity apart from its competition. So that's a great place to understand how the game plays prior to watching this review. Anyway, one of the barriers to entry with Infinity for a lot of gamers is that there is a steep learning curve. The game under its current N3 rule set has nine main factions, each has several available sub-factions within them, along with a number of non-aligned armies. So each force has a huge selection of units that are available to it. You then factor in that within the raft of available models, there are a vast number of available weapons, hackers, medics, camouflage models, tags, just to name but a few, and they all come with specific rules attached to them. It can all become very overwhelming for a new player. Now to combat this, Corvus Belly have been releasing two player starter sets over the years, which see two factions plus everything you need to get playing all in one box, along with a quick start book, which splits the basic rules down into five missions and gradually gets you to grips with how the game plays. I've had two of these starter boxes over the years and I've always been really impressed by the quality. However, the leap from mission five to the full N3 rules is huge. And herein lies the issue I've had with Infinity over the years. When I heard that Corvus Belly were releasing a streamlined, smaller scale version of Infinity, which would be a standalone game, as well as an entry point into the full rules, I was very excited by it. I personally love the Infinity aesthetic. I think the work they've done on the lore and the background is amazing, and I like the basic rules. So I honestly thought this might be exactly what I'm looking for. Fast forward to now, and Infinity Code 1 has released, alongside an intro box called Operation Kalstrom, which we have here. Now I have my hands on this set and I've had a chance to read the rules and play through the game. What are my thoughts now? Well, let's start with the box set. The Operation Kalstrom box comes as the perfect entry into Code 1. It contains seven models for the Pan Oceania faction and seven models for the Yujing faction. It comes with a paper mat, which is 24 inches by 32 inches and is the correct size for the 15 point smallest scale games that you can play with the Code 1 rules. Also included is double sided printed card terrain, which you punch out and build yourself and can be taken apart and reversed for a different style. You get all of the tokens that you need to play Code 1 and also some very nice faction specific D20 dice. You get three for each side. You'll rarely ever need to roll more than three and you definitely won't with the models included in this set. Again, this set includes a quick start booklet, which takes you through the basics of this new Code 1 rules by gradually introducing more models and more abilities and rules over the space of the five missions. So far, so good. The quality of the multi-part white metal models is fantastic. They're probably the best quality metal minis I know of, and they fit together very well. However, as I've had in the past with Infinity models, I struggled to get the super glue to stick them together. I've tried scrubbing them clean to remove any mold release agents. I've tried scrubbing them again. I've tried two different types of super glue. I've tried small amounts of glue and lots of glue. I've tried scoring the join and parts. However, it was just an act in frustration as they just didn't want to stick. Now you may not have this issue. Maybe you use an activator and that goes, it's kind of sets the glue off instantly. Maybe your glue works better than mine. However, this problem has genuinely only ever affected me when building Infinity Minis, and I've got no idea why. If you know why or you have a trick to build them, let me know in the comments, please. 
I did finally get them to stick together by using small pieces of tissue paper between the joins, which is a little trick I learned the last time I built Infinity Minis. And that said, once they were built, they do look amazing and very little in the way of mold lines or flash to clean off. I also had similar building issues when putting together the main four buildings. The instructions are included and they show which parts to use. However, they just kind of show it all coming together and not in which order to do it. I found that I ended up with a piece that I just couldn't get into place as it needed to both slide down into a slot at the same time as pushing through into a tab. The solution, which was a risky one with car terrain, was to strategically bend it to fit the last piece. However, while I was doing this, I was holding my breath and waiting for that inevitable snap of the stiff card. Luckily, it didn't happen. However, I don't feel as confident in taking it apart and rebuilding it each time, so mine are just staying fully built. Once built, however, the thick cardstock buildings are very sturdy and look great on the table, and they're a great way to get lots of terrain on your battlefield quickly. I'd happily buy another set of the terrain for bigger points games. Again, as I've experienced in the past, the Quick Start booklet does a great job of coaching you through the basics and getting you to a point where you're ready to move on to the next stage, which in this case is the Code 1 rules, a streamlined version of its bigger brother. Now, one downside is the full Code 1 rules are not included in this box. This was a real shame. I'd have loved to have had a printed version of the rules included. However, the rules are free online, as all versions of Infinity have been previously, so I downloaded these digital rules, and to be honest, my heart sank a little. 104 pages of rules. Now, in fairness, the first nine pages are the index and some background law, and the last four pages are advertising. However, that's still 91 pages of rules. The N3 rulebook does have 257 pages, so maybe I was being a little hasty. I started to read through the rules on my laptop and I soon began to feel like I was trying to learn some legal document for a test. The rules in Code 1 are very wordy to say the least. I was struggling, I don't mind admitting, however I wanted to give this game a fair crack. So I bought some printer ink and a pack of paper and I got to printing out the rules so I could make notes or highlight specific parts and be able to reference things to make it easier for me. It was at this point I realised that digital rules are not for me. I found it so much easier to be able to flick backwards and forwards and make notes as I went uh, and the rules started to sink in. Now they are by no means perfect. I still felt like I was reading a legal document and there seems to be a lot of repetition in the rules where it explains about movement for example about three times in different sections. I also felt that it seemed like the rules were out of order when trying to learn the game. As an example from page 10 to page 17, this is essentially the quick start rules that I'd already read. From the, uh, from the quick start book, and then it starts to teach you the basic rules, which go over a lot of what you've already read in those quick start rules, but it actually starts by telling you about open and private information, terminology and alignment, and labels and traits. Initially, I felt that if this is the basic stuff, I'm in for a bumpy ride. However, it does get better. Another example is initiative and deployment, pretty much the first thing you'll do in a game, doesn't appear until page 23 after you've learned about AROs and order skills. As I continued to read through, making some notes as I went, I started to feel a bit overwhelmed by the amount of special skills such as camouflage, climbing plus, doctor, forward jump, martial arts levels, mimetism and rem driver. After this, it all goes into the equipment like hacking devices and different levels of multi-spectral visors. I later looked at the weapons profiles and counted 46 different weapon types available. Now I'm not new to wargaming, it's not like I've never read a rulebook before or played rules heavy or more complex games, however this was quite overwhelming for a first few reads. It wasn't all bad news though, Corvus Belly have really gone to town and include a lot of examples to explain their rules. There's a lot of large scale diagrams and step by step real examples of a rule in action to show how it works and this is certainly why the rules are over 90 pages. I also found that after absorbing the rules and giving it my full attention that the core rules are actually pretty straightforward. Movement, AROs, shooting, dodging, close combat and cover are all very intuitive. I also found that in reality even though the book bombarded me with every single possibility that I may encounter in a game, I'm unlikely to come up against most of these special skills and complex abilities in my first games that I play and I think herein lies the biggest hurdle to Code 1 that I want to try and defend. 
If this was something like Warhammer 40,000, all of these abilities and skills would not be in the core rules. They'd be tucked away in the various army codexes where the relevant units would be able to read about them. The fact that Corvus Belli put them all in the main rules is a blessing for players who only need to look in that one free rule book to have all of the available information. However, it's also a curse that as a new player to the game, it appears so complex at first read, it may put some people off. The beauty of Code 1 is that you can only take a maximum of 10 models in your team, no matter the size of the game you're playing. Bigger games will give you access to more expensive troop choices, who will ultimately have access to more of these special skills, but when first starting out, a lot of the info in the book just isn't stuff that you'll need to know about. Now, if you always thought that Infinity was just too complex, you may initially feel like Code 1, whilst being a streamlined version of Infinity, is still a very complex game. That said, I think the rulebook doesn't do itself any favours, and maybe with a bit of reformatting, it could have been an easier read, which in turn would have helped to ease newer players into this world. The minis are amazing, the rules are not as complex as you'd think on first inspection, and the fact it's been built to play with a maximum of 10 models, the game can be as simple to get into as you want it to be. The rules are free online and there is a free Code 1 army builder which has all of the stuff you need to build your lists. The game starts at the 15 points level played on the match that's included in the starter set and it's a very similar size to those included within Warcry and Kill Team and you can scale it to a 30 points game playing on a 4x4 board which is the size of Infinity N3 and N4. One of the biggest issues may be one way that they've streamlined the game. Code 1 only uses four of the available factions from the full Infinity game. Yu Jing, Pan O, O12 and Combined Army. If you already have some Hackerslam models or you really like the Ariadna minis, then sadly you can't use them at this given time. They will be added in the future, but we're potentially looking at 12 months, let's just say, until new factions are added. There's a lot to love about Infinity Code 1, and I do. I will continue to play it, however you're going to really have to want to play it to fight through the rules if you're completely new to this game. There are a lot of options available in this area of tabletop gaming right now and it has stiff competition from games that are just much easier to get started with. That said, if you like your sci-fi skirmish games with a little more depth, this will hit that sweet spot and give you a firm grounding to make the leap to N4 when it arrives if you're craving more of the human sphere. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge and support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.